Hello everyone. My name is Dmitry Vostokov and I introduce Pattern Driven Software Diagnostics today. This is a version one of the webinar in order not to overwhelm you with concepts and slides. So I decided to keep this presentation as simple as possible and as short as possible. I see one of you raised a hand. So if you have any questions during this webinar, please ask by typing them or there is also a chat window. So let's continue. Prerequisites. These prerequisites are very simple and I suppose you all enjoy diagnosing software problems and not only software because there are many similarities with other disciplines such as medicine, hardware, aircraft maintenance and so on. Why there is such a webinar at all? After doing memory dump and software trace analysis professionally full-time for nearly nine years, I recently realized that what I was doing is called software diagnostics. At the same time, I wasn't able to find any comprehensive and systematic study of it, and it looks like every software vendor provides its own vision of it, uses own languages and tools. Perhaps the fact that software diagnostics was traditionally associated with troubleshooting and debugging masks its importance as a separate discipline. It was beneficial for me to read about medical diagnostics as there are many similarities there and find out that today we share the same goals that were outlined in a book with the title Diagnosis, Philosophical and Medical Perspectives. That book was published 20-30 years ago when medical diagnostics went through a computer revolution. So our goals here are to outline a comprehensive methodology including processes and a common language and understand technological limits and at the same time see what services are needed for software diagnostics. Here in this webinar we mainly provide parallels with medical diagnostics that we call just diagnostics for short. Traditionally diagnostics is based on two pillars, pattern recognition through symptoms and signs and systems approach, a set of interrelated parts having structure and functions. So, software diagnostics is based on the same principles. In this webinar, we are concerned only with the first part, pattern recognition. 
A systemic perspective and system thinking will be covered in the second webinar in September. At the end I put a slide with an information on how to register there. Symptoms. Symptoms include user or system complaints. It is necessary to include software as having symptoms as well, such as error message boxes. And like in diagnostics, we have histories of complaints which can be considered as a pattern of software description. Signs are what traditionally were called patterns in artifacts such as live memory and post-mortem dumps and software traces and logs. Such signs are situation dependent. What in one case can be considered a leak, such as 5000 handles, might be quite normal for another case. Also some signs are specific and lead to easy shallow diagnosis such as CPU spike and some signs are non-specific and require a deep analysis such as nexus violation. In diagnostics, a group of associated symptoms and signs is called a syndrome. Software diagnostics distinguishes pattern groups as pattern interaction and pattern succession. The former one covers repeated cases where patterns occur together without any visible causal links and the latter deals with sets of patterns that have causal links. Looking at pattern interaction cases, it is easy to see that some patterns precede others. For example, heap corruption caused by an error message uh, causes an error message box and therefore blocks other threads and creating conditions therefore for another pattern to appear weight chains. Blocked threads may block other coupled processes creating interprocess weight chains and finally into machine weight chains. Some patterns are most likely found in succession and other patterns are less likely to affect abnormal conditions together. Such pattern sequences can help in troubleshooting, debugging and root cause analysis. After this webinar I post this presentation on memory dump analysis services and you can download and navigate through links. Diagnostics is separate from treatment, although post-treatment monitoring also considered as diagnostics. The same should be for software diagnostics as well. It is separate from post-construction problem resolution activities such as troubleshooting and debugging. As well, performance monitoring is also a part of software diagnostics proper. Treatment or problem solving in a resolution phase has its own patterns such as workaround and unified debugging patterns. For further discussion here please see a reference to pattern driven software problem solving presentation at the end of this webinar.
A few words about the diagnostics process. It should be iterative based on checklists and include post-mortem analysis of past diagnostic encounters in the light of success or failure of subsequent treatment and monitoring as diagnostics tests. And you see that each phase feeds each other, as well as post-mortem analysis of diagnostics reports and treatment, problem solving. Now we briefly cover checklists. They should be artifact-based, such as, for example, checklists for memory dump and software trace analysis. Of course, there are some common checks, so they should be factored out into a more general level. This leads to layered checklists. Again, when you get this presentation, you also see these links for checklists, checklist examples. Software diagnostics is useless if we don't have established null cases, cases where the behavior is expected. Here master traces and reference tech traces is of our great help. The current state of software diagnostics is abnormal as well. Multiplicity of everything without anything unifying. Unified software diagnostics pattern language is the cure of the current diagnostics illness. Antipatterns are also of help here. For example, inquisite antipattern, for example, describes an engineer who only demands more and more data without giving any explanation why it is needed. Software Diagnostics Institute will also provide ready to use less technical explanations for specific patterns. Here are links to pattern catalogs in their current states. The first two links cover symptoms and the next two links signs in memory dumps and software traces. There is also need to have patterns for software diagnostics itself, independent from specific artifact analysis patterns. Examples of such meta patterns include first fault, multiple patterns, null case, for example, healthy system, null diagnosis, nothing found, and also if nothing found, that may require second opinion separate pattern, noise, for example, another pattern that needs to be filtered or paid attention to, as it might hide further patterns of interest.
One of the benefits of pattern language for software diagnostics is its uniform description of the same behavioral problems on different systems and even discovery of new possible patterns previously going undetected or not paid enough attention to. Here I provide two examples, two links, actually four links for two examples. Multiple, the first one is multiple exceptions pattern when several threads experience exceptions false independently when running on multiple CPUs and another example is spiking thread pattern. So there is a question Uh, there is a question about anti-patterns to explain them a bit more. Actually, anti-patterns anti are patterns themselves, but they describe something abnormal for patterns. Or, for example, there is some process like diagnostics that has its own patterns and these patterns are supposed to be applied correctly. However, if there are some abnormalities for some process, for example, for software diagnostics process, methods and so on, usually this involves humans, human interaction, then such patterns of abnormal process incidents, they usually called, such patterns are usually called anti-patterns. They are very famous in software construction world so, uh, software, for example, there are software design and architectural patterns, but there are also anti-patterns well known. Usually this involves software process and, for example, wrong, wrongly applied uh, wrong management decisions or wrong interaction between people. So there's a huge literature, not huge, but uh, substantial literature on um, anti-patterns. Uh, actually, I can put some links. I put a note. Let me go back to this slide. And so... I put a note, put some links to software construction anti-patterns, just an example. And maybe to give a bit clearer, clearer definition for anti-patterns. Actually, there are anti-patterns for memory dump analysis, for example and uh, we plan to put some examples for software trace analysis as well. So, if you visit, for example, if you visit memory dump analysis catalog, at the end you would find uh, 10 or so examples for memory dump analysis anti-patterns, patterns of abnormal application of uh, abnormal memory dump analysis, like for example uh, requesting wrong files or using the wrong process and so on. So I hope I uh, ma uh, made this clear. And uh, going back, so Inquisitor you know, a person that only demands information and doesn't 
provide anything back, such as explanations, why all this information is needed more and more, is clearly an anti-pattern, wrong pattern of software diagnostics behavior. So let's go further. So now we come to performance monitoring. Performance monitoring is also part of software diagnostics and the same patterns can be used here. For example, counter value pattern. A counter value is some variable in memory, for example a module variable that is updated periodically to reflect some aspect of state and it can be calculated from different such variables and presented in trace messages. Therefore, all other trace analysis patterns, such as a joint thread, focus of tracing, characteristic message blocks, activity regions, significant events, and others can be applicable here. There are also some specific patterns for performance monitoring, such as global monotonicity and constant value that we publish later on. Global Monotonicity is a case when performance for shorter periods fluctuates around increasing average value. For example, you record performance for one day and it fluctuates around some value. But if you record it on succession, on successive dates, you would see that this average value increases and increases and increases, so you might possibly have a leak. And uh, Constant, uh, constant counter values can be signs for process freeze and weight chains. Weight chains. So let's continue. Now I want to provide you one example of monitoring best practices uh, related to artifact collection, a link. So one of such best practices is always provides supporting and context information that helps finding messages, anchor messages in large software traces. Typical example, for example, from terminal services is that you have 100 user sessions, you record trace with millions of messages, but you don't provide which terminal session, for example, was uh, behaving abnormally. One of the current goals of Software Diagnostics Institute is to develop a range of software diagnostics certifications so that individuals can demonstrate knowledge of pattern-driven software diagnostics for troubleshooting and debugging purposes, such as memory dump and software trace analysis, and the ability to use uniform methodology and pattern language for different operating systems and debuggers. For example, to use the same language for analysis of software logs and traces created by 
different tracing tools. Another advantage is using the same language across different teams and even departments and even help with hiring right people with the right skills. Uniform pattern language also eliminates steep learning curves when supporting different products and vendors. Another goal is corporate enterprise maturity certification. Some companies do not use any methodology and don't have any processes for software diagnostics. And even if they do, they use different languages to communicate their analysis of software artifacts to other companies when doing software troubleshooting and debugging in complex environments that include software from different vendors. Such certification for post-construction phase complements software construction certification such as capability maturity model. A few words about diagnostics audit. It is always possible to have a second opinion, especially for complex software incidents. So one of goals is to create a catalog of diagnostic errors. To avoid errors, what is good to have is good to have checklists for checklists for example, to update them regularly and use diagnostics for diagnostics from time to time to improve the whole service. One such service is audit service from memory dump analysis services. A few words about human side of software diagnostics. So in case of gray diagnostic load for engineers, they obviously become tired and this reduces efficiency and also affects their ability to provide more deep diagnostics because what happens sometimes, and this is a pattern of software diagnostics as well, is that when an engineer sees one pattern, then the whole process is stopped. But if a diagnostics is done a bit deeper, then some other patterns can be found. So, and then, you know, there is a question because of that human side is, is automation possible for software diagnostics? We actually think that it is impossible to provide complete automation because of constant growth of data and growth of complexity. And the only alternative is to have computer-assisted diagnostics for humans. So partially automate, uh, partial automation only possible. Okay, there are some raised hands. Let me see.
If you raise a hand, please also type a question. Oh, I don't see any questions, so let's continue. As I mentioned at the start, in addition to pattern recognition, systemic perspective helps here, and it is of great help in software diagnostics and in medical diagnostics. The whole journey for me started almost six years ago when I realized that systems theory helps in memory dump analysis. So a second webinar on software diagnostics from this perspective is planned earlier in September. I think this is for the 3rd of September, where I cover application of systems theory and system thinking provide some nice diagrams, more pictures than today. Finally, a few words about malware analysis. Here, software diagnostics can be naturally extended to malware and victimware analysis where the latter victimware includes innocent victims of malware, victims of other coding mistakes or deliberate subversion and some, some for example, some programs, uh, some code starts as a part of crimeware and malware but eventually uh, becomes victims through uh, coding mistakes. So it is common that your computer becomes infected by malware, but this malware crashes. So next Monday there is another webinar on this and I might even show some hands-on uh, crash dump analysis. So there is one useful book on medical diagnostics that I found useful and already mentioned it at the beginning. I also include links to relevant presentations and books. So when you download this presentation, you can check them out. And finally, a question answers. I'm very interested in how to improve this introduction. This is version one. So I hope in one year I make it better. So please send your comments and suggestions. If I cannot, uh, if I can't answer your questions now, I then post them on Memory Dump Analysis Services website later this week.
So, thank you for attendance. So thank you for attendance as well. If you have questions, please ask. So there is one question. So there is a question about is there any existing patent related to this? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, there are no patents, uh, patents to, uh, to this. But, um, you know, uh, you can't patent uh, ideas, only implementations. But uh, memory dump analysis services has uh, a few implementations for pattern-driven software diagnostics. It's a uh, crash analysis report environment and uh, software trace analysis report environment. But anyway, you know, uh, I've been talking about patterns for six years, so it is a bit late for uh, um, filing a patent, but I'll think about it. Uh, where can we download this presentation? Uh, I think on memory dump analysis services. Let me let me open. So I think I put something here on this portal or on a blog, a note. And uh, I think on memory dump analysis services, uh, you will be able to see uh, this presentation, download this presentation from this presentations page. I think I put it uh, in a couple of hours today. Okay, thank you very much for attending. Thank you again. Thank you again and see you next time for a different presentation. Thank you. Bye-bye.